Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Yellowstone Season 5, Episode 7. This is the final episode of the calendar year. Let's all process our emotions. Let's go and drink ourselves into just like complete like oblivion as a result. Who wants a bar? <laughs> So good. This episode was a 10 out of 10. This is like everything that I've been waiting for all season long. I loved absolutely everything about it. It's so sad that we're not going to be getting any new episodes until sometime next year. They haven't announced when it's coming back, but yeah, yeah this is the last episode. At least we got some really good theater <laughs> moments. It it was so good. Uh, I'm really happy leaving the sh the season in the middle like this, where it's on a high note. Yeah, we 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 went through it, everybody, to get to this point. I mean, we we. I all... love you, Teeter. Okay, yeah, we we're we're gonna talk all about the greatness of Teeter, the greatness of Teeter and Colby. There's so much to unpack there, but before we go any further here, go ahead. And hit that subscribe button. You know, we have more Yellowstone videos mm -hmm. coming up. Who knows the next time Teeter's going to be talking about a bar. So, you know, you don't want to miss any of that coming your way. Also, Merry Christmas to everybody yes. who is celebrating that. Happy Hanukkah. That starts today to everyone who is celebrating that. And if you're not celebrating anything, uh, we hope you just have a really fun holiday season with everyone who is celebrating great food, family, friends. And thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel and been here with us all season long watching Yellowstone. It's been really great. And there's been really great conversations in the comments. So, you know, we both really appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's a this is a great video to sort of like you sort of mentioned to leave off on because there's just there's so many different things to talk about, but the 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 Teeter Colby bar conversation oh like God. this Ow, it was so cute it was so cute it was so unbelievably funny and I think to me what made this so good is I I, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, okay you know we're making a joke about Teeter's accent again but I've I've known Man, people. I love it. I've known people who say bear like bar before, and any time this happened in real life, everyone would comment on it because no one knew what they were saying. It's a very specific group of people who call bear bar, and you know, if you're from certain parts of the country, you're well aware of this already. It was probably one of the most relatable moments I've had watching Yellowstone because I do not relate to many of these characters at all otherwise. Yeah, it was just, it was so nice with everything that's going on in this yep. episode that's really intense to have the moments with Teeter and Colby and everybody just having a really fun time going to the fair, yeah. winning her bar. I just, <laughs> I, I absolutely loved it. And this is why I'm... I'm so for having a bunk house spinoff. I yep. could watch these guys all day long, all day long. Yeah, there's just, there's so many different dynamics to play out there. You, you know, you've got Teeter and Colby, who obviously our, our opinions of them are very, very clear at this point. You know, you've got Lloyd, who is capable of some really <laughs> interesting moments here or there. Yep. You know, you can throw Rippin occasionally, mm -hmm. you know. Ryan, okay, you know, listen. It's... Bye, Abby. Listen, <laughs> that whole scene, like, I've not been a fan of this romance. But the minute that he was told that he's going to be going on this cowboy adventure, that's like this huge thing for him. And he's explaining it to her in a way that she should very much understand to be like, this is like being on the biggest stage in the world for me. Like, yeah. you know, and it's his job. Like the way she was talking about, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, go chase your dream. I wish... You know, your dream was me. And it's just like, okay, one, this isn't a dream. This yeah. is his job. <laughs> yeah. And they're telling him that he has to go do something at his job. Okay, that's one thing. Two, this is something where it's like, this is like one of the highest points of his job. That's yeah. like, oh man, this is like, this is it. This is what I do this job for. And she's just not supportive. Is like, basically choose me or the job. And it's just like, Girl, bye. Nah, <laughs> like that's nah. I don't want to see that. I'm done with that no. relationship. Do not bring her back. You know what kind of fish Abby is? 
She's a shellfish because she is okay. so unbelievably selfish. Oh yeah, I God. made that joke. I do not care. Don't stop watching, though. I do care about that. But no, <laughs> it's just, I, I just, I, I have no interest in Abby. I didn't really love this character in the first place. It just, the whole storyline just felt <laughs> so routine. And also, you could have given us more tea drink, Colby. I'll, I'll, st I'll stop with the tea drink, Colby, now. But it's just like you, you had a really compelling relationship that has been pushed to the side, so we could focus on this that didn't seemingly end up going anywhere. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there was there was a lot of relationship stuff going on in here. We saw, of course, Rip is going to be going away for about a year. So yeah. there was a little bit there with him and Beth. There was a really good relationship moment with. Beth and Monica that I, yeah. uh, you know, we're going to get a little bit more into because I think that that was a really big sort of turning moment in a lot of ways. But let's talk about the relationship with Summer because Summer yeah. is someone that I just haven't been able to get into. And I think a lot of people have been having a really hard time with her. I mean, even in this conversation that she was having with John, where she's kind of like, yeah, you know, I've learned a lot and I'm not going to start eating beef or anything, but you ate a stick of butter like five <laughs> episodes ago. So, you know, you can just sit down. But I think there was a really important conversation here where she was kind of like, listen, like everybody judges people before really getting to know them. And yeah. one of the amazing things that, you know, you've given me, John, is that you brought me here. And I was, even though I've lived a lot of life, she's like, I've lived all over the place and people judge me, you know, by my license plate and not by my life experience. And then I did the same thing to you until I had an opportunity to come here and, learn about you, the ranch, uh, what's going on here. And I think other people could benefit from having that same type of actual peek into other people's lives. And I have to agree. I think that it is very easy for people to make assumptions about people. I mean, we've had them here at the channel yeah. since we've been doing Yellowstone. Somebody last week even left us a comment that was like, well, obviously you're not from Texas. And to that, I have to say, take it away, Matt. Howdy. I'm from Texas. Yeah. I grew up in a small town in Texas. I have been out to like Bodunk, West Texas on a number of different occasions. My grandmother actually owned horses and at points cows. So uh, now I'll make it clear. I never was on a ranch. I have never been to a ranch other than like to have some like a steak once upon a time. But you know what? Most people in Texas have not. Not everybody in Texas wears a 10-gallon hat. I am wearing a Raptors beanie that is not a cowboy hat at all. Like, you know, it's all, once again, we can't make judgments about people. Yeah, I think it was a really important conversation because it allowed both of these characters who live in their own bubble, like yeah. we all do, to see things from different perspectives and still come together romantically. I think we all saw that coming. Yeah, like that part of it, I think, was predictable. But I think the conversation itself was important. And there's one vantage point of me where I'm just like, okay, John, with the we're going to kiss behind the cowboy hat thing. But at the same time, that is exactly what John Dutton would do. It is like the ultimate old school Western trope. And he he is basically like a 1950s Western movie character who they have just like transported into the present. And he is just like this extreme outlier with the rest of the show. Yeah. Okay. So that brings us to Beth because Beth has had some really good storylines in this particular episode. Yeah. So she had this talk with Monica sort of where you know we all know that Beth you know rips on everybody yeah. and gives everybody a lot of hell so but she doesn't do that to Monica and she hasn't done that to Monica at all Monica even made a comment about that to Summer a couple episodes ago where she was like there's another side to Beth that you don't know. You know, Casey could have married anybody and he married me. And, you know, she was really supportive of this the entire time. So even when they were having this conversation where Beth was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that to you. And Monica was like, well, it shouldn't be because I lost a child because really it's been going on longer than that. And 
Beth actually sat down with her and admitted that she went through something very similar and she understands it on a very intimate level. And then Monica's had more understanding of her now too, to kind of be like, so this is why you're as angry as you are because you're not telling anybody. You can't release all this anger that you feel because you're just holding it in and sitting on it. And Beth tried to, you know, <laughs> yeah. slush it off to be like, nah, I've been, I've been this way since before <laughs> then. But that, you know, you, we've seen a little bit of that, but we haven't seen the anger that she holds since after that it that really did change her entire life and she has been sitting on it and it has been affecting the way that she's treating everyone but she said i can't tell because this is going to hurt a number of people it's going to hurt her it's going to hurt rip it's going to hurt john and it's going to hurt jamie i mean she's by not telling she has been protecting him as well it is beth is really like the she is the focal point of a lot of the themes of this show when it comes to repression, when it comes to mm -hmm. just sort of, oh, you you can't let people see your emotional side. And this mm -hmm. is a very big part, I think, you know, in cowboy culture sometimes, sometimes like machismo culture too, mm -hmm. although, you know, you can't, you have to put on a brave face all the time. And Beth like, go, takes it to like another extreme where she's not just brave, she's just like hyper aggro aggressive all of the time. And I think she would rather people think that she is, you know, this venomous jerk than somebody who has any sort of heart because it's easier. Nobody asks her tough questions. Nobody tries to like get within all of that. You know, she can just repel people away. And yeah, that's frustrating to watch at times as a viewer where, because I, I have been multiple times this season, like, okay, enough of this. Beth is too much. She's over the top all the time. But I get it from the vantage point of who she is, what she has gone through. And, you know, I can, I can justify it realistically. And I think that's, that's what this show needs to do. I have to be able to believe why someone is behaving the way that they are. I believe it for the most part, but I needed to see this moment with Monica where she is vulnerable to somebody else and that there are certain people that she can actually have that relationship with. We've seen it a tiny bit with Rip, but I mean, even in some of their most vulnerable moments, she still has her guard up and to see that she doesn't with Monica is something that I need to see in the Beth character. You guys let me know in the comments if this is something you want to see just a little bit more. I'm not saying take away her hard edge, but yeah. that it's okay to have that hard edge with people that you don't have a more developed relationship with, but that in private in mm -hmm. and people you care about and people you respect, that it's okay to have a little bit, you know, a little bit mm -hmm. more of a vulnerable side. But then that brings us into what's going on with Beth now and the ranch, where yeah. she's kind of really realized that this business is not a business. It's not making any money. It's losing mm -hmm. money. I mean, we've all kind of seen that throughout the seasons. It's losing money, losing money. Now it's about to lose an incredible amount of money, so much money that John's going to need to take out millions in loans to be able to make any of this happen. Now we have Beth where she's in a spot where she is ready to turn it around, turn this maybe into a beef ranch where they can actually make some money. Okay. So I like this stuff for Beth because I, I like a reminder of everything that she's really good at career wise. Cause we don't see mm -hmm. enough of it. We instead just see her telling off people <laughs> at market equities and it's like, okay, Beth has some really good ideas and there's a lot of like major face palming going on here with John because once again John this is not 1956 the internet exists not only that but the internet has existed for decades I, you know it is how are you not taking advantage of this and this is one of those this is a stupid assumption that I made and this is my fault this isn't the show's fault where I kind of thought that this show and this ranch was already doing some of this just because like in my head that just makes sense so you know this is the 21st century at this point, like, you know, you got to find ways to kind of continue to make things work and to see like the difference between this ranch and the four sixes and everything that's kind of going on. It's just like, John, man, 
How do you not do better at this? Listen, I think sometimes it just takes for the younger generation to come in. My grandfather Compton was exactly like this. He was really old school and he had an import export business throughout the Caribbean. That is what my background is. And so for him, internet was not it. Getting on a plane, going down there, shaking hands, making deals, actually seeing people face to face. That was how he ran it until one of his daughters <laughs> came in and was like oh dad no okay you can do that and you can keep doing that but I'm gonna bring it into you know where we are now in the present so that you can continue to do it the way that you feel comfortable doing it and you know that still works but we need to add the website <laughs> it's uh, okay well good news John you've got some assistance here it's it's hopefully going to work out but you know we're Going to be getting into the four sixes here, and there's a lot to yep. talk about. But if you're enjoying this discussion, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, you know, because we will be back discussing Yellowstone mm -hmm. whenever this show does return. So there's a lot to look forward to there. But now let's let's talk about Jimmy because for many weeks on end here, we have been on this channel being like, where is our guy Jimmy? Well, now we know they're gonna go down there to Texas. He's going to be there. Emily's going to be there. We'll get an update on their relationship. I think to me, this is a pretty clear indication that, you know, Rip even said they could be down there a while, but we're going to spend a pretty substantial period of time there because otherwise, you know, why, why are Jimmy and Emily even series regulars? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's going to be a bit of a different setup if that is the way that they're going to do it where we're going to spend part of our time out there part yeah. of our time over here i mean it's not necessarily bad or good but it's going to be interesting to see how that comes together okay yeah. let's we're deep into the video now we haven't talked about a uh, jamie oh and okay. what is going on and the idea now is with sarah and jamie that they are going to have john removed from office and put jamie in office which is you know they already set that up but now they've kind of have an idea of how they're going to do that because he has said in private that the reason he ran for governor was to save his ranch it's not really about being governor it's not yeah it's not not about helping people in the state but that's not the reason that he did this and we even saw with rainwater where he was just like where is he that, you know, they're looking to build a pipeline under our water. You know, the senator's here with me. Where is John? Yeah. He's my governor too. Oh, he's off, you know, with the cattle. It's just kind of like, I understand why everyone's getting really frustrated with that, that even if John really didn't want to be governor for any other reason than to save the ranch, he does care about his state. So it is kind of weird that there isn't a little bit more of that. Yeah, and I, I think it's going to get even worse because if this whole operation is going to go down in Texas, and I know there's other people that have been entrusted to sort of do it and be responsible, but I don't believe for a split second that John is not going to like fly down there every single chance that he can and sort of monitor the situation and the cattle, and that's going to mean even more time away from Montana, even more of these issues with rainwater or other people where it's like, you took this job. You may not have wanted this job, but you still took it. You kind of have to at least pretend like you're doing the job. It was a really interesting conversation with Sarah and Jamie yeah. when this was all sort of coming together because she really figured out and hit on the thing that Jamie is lacking and missing and craving, which is love, respect, yeah. some sort of understanding of him, of how he ended up in the position that he did, that he did everything that he was forced into, even though he wanted to be on the ranch and with his dad and with the family, but he was forced into this position that he didn't want to be in, but he did it. He did it for the family and he's still in it for the family, but... <laughs> you know, that he really wants this love and respect of his dad. And Sarah was kind of like, well, you know, you're not going to get it. It's just, it's where it is. 
And that's why I think this show is as good as it is. This show, yes, it's about cowboys and it has yeah. that sort of cowboy feel. And, that, and all of that is great. But the reason that this show reaches beyond people who live that lifestyle or are really into that lifestyle, yeah. people like me, I'm from Toronto. <laughs> like, I'm not, you know, somebody who was growing up on a ranch or around that lifestyle. But the reason that I connect with this show are these family moments where he's talking about like not really connecting with his dad, but really wanting to connect with his dad. I think there's a lot of people out there that are in that type of a position where they don't connect with a parent or they want to have that respect of their parent. They don't know how to go about it. There just is no way to kind of go about it. And that reaches a huge audience. And that's why this show does as well as it does, in my opinion. And it really like this dynamic between Jamie and John, it's going to be really interesting to watch because this is just sort of, you know, I've got a couple tinfoil hat things here, but this is the first one I'm going to put out. You know, Jamie may be in a situation here where he really starts to get the snowball going down the hill and it's becoming this avalanche against John when it comes to, you know, the ranch and the use of money and potentially bankrupting the state and all this other sort of stuff. But it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing altogether if Sarah sort of constructs this whole case against John for removing him from office and you sort of run into these, are John's careers, is his whole career going to be over? Is his reputation going to be destroyed? Is everything that John had going to be taken from him? And then when the dust settles and all of that, like, is Jamie going to be okay with that? Like, is Jamie going to be able to sort of reconcile that he is basically taking everything away from this man who's loving attention he so craves that it's a really delicate tightrope. Listen, Jamie's like in his 40s now yeah. or whatever. That that ship has sailed. <laughs> if he doesn't have that from his father now, I'm not saying it can't ever happen, but it's not going to happen in this situation, whether he plays ball or he doesn't play ball, because he has played ball in a lot of different ways, like he said, and he still can't get anywhere. So at this point, I that's why I think that conversation was so important with what Sarah said, where she was kind of like... It's not going to happen for you. So you have to carve out what you want for your life now at this point, because it doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to get what you want from him, which is love and respect. It's just it's it's not there and it wasn't there and it's not going to show up for any reason. So and the other thing is, is one of the things that he said in that conversation is that he wants to find a way to save the ranch in yeah. some kind of way. He doesn't want to just necessarily bury his father. He's not doing this to be like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, ruin him forever. Jamie wants something for himself. He wants to be governor. But he also made it very clear that he doesn't want the ranch just buried into the ground. That's what's going to make this so interesting to me is that I think... I think Jamie thinks he's more persuasive than he is. And I think Jamie thinks that he can put this out into the universe and that Sarah's really going to listen to him. But it's sort of like what Jamie's assistant says, like, don't really trust her. And, you know, I think that went in one of Jamie's ears and just like, just like right out the other. But yeah. And it's interesting, too, because Beth and Jamie are actually on the same page. They're both looking for a way to save the ranch but in different ways. Like, and I know that they're not going to see each other's point of view, but they both said in this episode that what they're doing is trying to bring the ranch into a place where it's profitable and makes uh, and safe to some degree. All right. Since we're so far into this video, I'm going to be a complete crazy person here for a second. So, okay. This plan from Sarah, it's not going to work. Like that, that's not going to happen. We're not going to see things play out like this. The money's not going to be the undoing of John. It's still going to be the wolves. I have not let go of the wolves are the big problem thing. And I will not do this until they like pry this theory out of my cold, dead hand somewhere before the end of this season. I want to see this show shake up. It has been the same story that we have been dealing with, with John fighting to keep his land. Five yeah. seasons we're into this now. And we haven't, we've seen, you know, little, little ups, little downs, but nothing has happened yet. I want to actually see John take a loss in some sort of a way. And not because I want John to lose at the end of all of this, 
but he needs to take some sort of a loss and Jamie needs to take some sort of a win. It can't be five seasons of Jamie's just a punching bag over and over and over again. And John keeps coming out on top with his family. There has to be a little bit of volleying back and forth where Jamie actually gets a win and we're all kind of like, oh my <laughs> God, by the end of the season, what's going to happen? We are set up, I think, in a really fascinating place for the second half of the season. We've kind of got a sense now as to what a lot of people are going to be doing, how John may be vulnerable because his attention is so focused on the cattle right now. So yep. we'll see exactly what happens, but hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss anything coming up. We hope you are having a great holiday season. Yep. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you here next time.